So first things first, when we're talking about narcissism, the reality is, is every single human being inherently is a little bit narcissistic. Like, especially if you're ambitious, especially if you're outgoing. So if you're like an entrepreneur or you're like a top athlete or you're like a top executive or you're like somebody who's really fucking good and driven and ambitious, you most definitely have some narcissistic t- like tendencies and traits. Okay, so now that we know that, let's take that and set that over here for one second and let's come back and talk about narcissism because narcissism in and of itself is a personality trait. It's a tendency. And people can be more narcissistic in certain situations, but you can also have narcissistic tendencies without having a mental disorder. So in reality, narcissism exists on a spectrum, okay? You can have healthy narcissism, like that is a thing, self-confidence, like driven, people like me and you. But you can also have a very negative, dark, unhealthy narcissism, which is very toxic in relationships. So number one is narcissism. Then you have Narcissistic Personality Disorder, or NPD. And so Narcissistic Personality Disorder is exactly what it says. It's a mental disorder. Now, it's all the same characteristics and tendencies of a narcissist, except somebody that has NPD, like, they have trouble functioning in in society. Like, they definitely don't function well in relationships. They don't function well, definitely don't function well in interpersonal relationships. And sometimes they, and likely, they even have time, like, hard time holding a job or, like, showing up and being accountable, right? One thing that is constant in all narcissism and types of narcissism traits is lack of accountability, um, lack of telling the truth, lack of, you know, everything, really any accountability or ownership. Like that is one of the traits, right? Self-importance, self-centeredness, admiration, lack of empathy, excessive need for control and uh, blame shifting and shame shifting because narcissists, it, uh, what their whole entire core wound is, is around shame and guilt. So that's the two things you have to understand. So you have narcissism and then you have NPD. Now, a lot of these relationships end up coming together through a trauma bond, some sort of trauma bond. Trauma bond being like um, we both experience some sort of trauma and it's usually, like think of like a yin and a yang. Like it's the same, t- it's the same trauma except at opposite ends of the spectrum, right? It's like light versus dark. And so you have these trauma bonds and what we do is we fill in the gaps or the voids by finding a partner who will fill them for us, quote unquote, fill them for us. And so when we trauma bond together and what happens in the cycle of abuse, when we're talking about trauma bonding, is it's this excessive attachment. Like it's this, I pour love into you and I make you fucking just think that I'm the greatest. I think that you're the greatest. And then I pull away and I use this system as control. And it's called trauma bonding. And a lot of times people fall into it without even knowing it. And this can happen between people who aren't narcissistic or have no narcissism, but they maybe have unhealed codependency or anxious attachment styles or avoidant attachment styles. And so it's not just narcissism, but this is how trauma bonding works. It's a vicious fucking cycle. Okay, now let's take this conversation back to men and how we end up with narcissistic women. A lot of us men have trauma bonds that stem somewhere from childhood. And if you're around the age of 40 like me, it actually doesn't even matter. A lot of us don't have fucking dads. A lot of our dads walked out, parents are divorced, dads aren't in our life, either way, right? And so a lot of us men grow up with a codependency issue because our mother had to nurture us and overcompensate for the lack of the father and the masculine in the family. And so what happens is when we get into relationships, the first time that she pushes back, that the feminine, that the woman pushes back, the one that's supposed to nurture and love us like our mother did, we think she hates us. And because we have this unhealed codependency issue, we act out. And so I'm saying this to say that a lot of men find themselves in narcissistic relationships without even knowing it, largely based around their unhealed codependency, okay? So like, let's keep putting this all together now. All right, so now this is how this shit all goes down. You're just regular ass guy out bebopping around in your life and you meet this woman and you two fucking hit it off. And man, she is just like, you can't believe this woman that is this beautiful, this gorgeous, this amazing, this mind fucking blowing, who's into all the same shit as that you're into. You can't fucking believe she's into you. And for the next few months, man, this woman just like, she's, a, she's afraid to lose you. She's telling you, I don't know how I ever got lucky enough to get you. I mean, she is like just fucking telling you, all the things that you've dreamed of and that making you feel, and, and on top of that, it's, it's building up your confidence. And so you're going out into the world more confident, not ego driven, but like, yo, like I feel like I could take on the world and she is just empowering you. That is called the love bombing phase. And what they're doing is they're trying to get their hooks set into you. And what they're doing is mimicking and mirroring you. And so once they have that pattern down and they have you hooked and they know exactly what it is that you like, good morning. Good morning. They know exactly what it is that you like and what you're after. Now you're hooked and you can't get out. 
Okay, now this is where the devaluation phase starts. Remember, we've talked in the past about the two types of narcissists in the beginning. One type of narcissist is very sinister, they're malignant. They're out there looking for a target and a victim to specifically take advantage of. The other type of narcissist is one that's just so hurt from childhood that they've never been able to get over it. And so they're actually out there looking for love and somebody to make them feel safe. And so sometimes a narcissist, especially a covert female narcissist, will actually fall in love with you in the beginning. Like you are the dream. You're the one that's finally gonna save them from the perils of their life. And the first person that's ever gonna show up. But what happens in those relationships is inevitably, I mean, there's nothing you can do about it. Inevitably, they are, cause they're looking for a reason to make you out to be a liar, a cheat, a manipulator. Not because they don't like you, but because that's the only paradigm that they live within. And so they're waiting for that fucking one, ah, oh, I got you. And that, that second that they do it, that's when the devaluation phase starts. And that's the cycle when the abuse starts, the digs, the criticism, the constant you're not enough, blaming you for everything, shaming you, emasculating you. And you will wonder how in the, where it came from. Like this woman that was just swooning you for months and months, all of a sudden like is mad at you all the time, no matter what. And so your unhealed codependency issues and your trauma bond and the protector and the provider role that she specifically picked you for because she knows you have it, because she knows that she can pull that string and you'll try harder and it'll actually trap you into the relationship longer. So what happens in this devaluation phase is they start beating you down. You don't understand it. You're like, wait, what the fuck? Like, is this really happening? Because it doesn't make any sense. And you don't want to speak out about it because you don't want to sound like a bitch. You're trying to figure out like, what's up, what's up, what's up? And then every so often they're gonna come in, right as they, they think they're pushing it maybe a little too far and they're gonna love bomb you again. And that's how the devaluation phase goes. And it can go on for weeks, months, even years, decades sometimes, right? And like in my mom's case. And the whole time she's doing this through gaslighting you, which means that you remember one thing to be true because you know that's how the fuck it went down. But then when you bring it to their attention, they're like, that's not how it went down. Now, some narcissists will be very egregious about this and like straight up lie to you. And some will be a little bit more like, you know, like it's a balance to it. It's not that every gaslighter, but that's what gaslighting is. So for example, you know, like after my events, my speaking events, I would give my ex thousands of dollars. I'd like, here's, here's $4,000 for all the things, yada, yada, yada. Except then you fast forward a few months down the road and she'd be like, you never did that. And it's like, what the fuck do you mean? It's right here. It's right here in Venmo. I can see it. She's like, that didn't happen like that. What the fuck do you mean? I literally have a paper trail of thousands, tens of thousands of dollars I've sent you. What do you mean? That, like that's, you know, and so that's an example of gaslighting. And if this abuse goes on literally for years on end, it begins to physically change your brain. That's what trauma abuse does. And gaslighting makes you literally not be able to understand what's real in your own reality. The grand finale, blah, you get the discard phase. Now, some narcissists will discard you and some narcissists will make life so fucking terrible for you until you up and leave yourself. Now, that's a whole nother longer video on do, does the narcissist actually want you to leave? It depends on a few different factors. But for the sake of this conversation, this is what the discard phase is. And it hurts like a motherfucker. It's very abrupt. And you are left wondering, what happened? How did we go from this thing that was like, oh my God, I'm the luckiest man in the world, to literally, I don't know anything about myself. I feel like the world's biggest piece of shit. She's right. I'm good for fucking nothing. I didn't try. I didn't show up. This whole entire thing is my fault. I might as well just fucking kill myself. That's literally what men are left feeling like after a relationship with covert female narcissist. And if you're watching this and you're a man who's dealt with it, you know exactly what I'm talking about. And so it's this point right now that if you're watching this video, you need to figure out how to take next steps to recover and heal.